This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, shop owners along an Invercargill street call for safety improvements but a city council pushes back. Six new people are formally sworn in as Dunedin city councillors and take part in their first meeting. And we meet the artist whose lifelong passion for plastic is on display for all to see. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Dupree. Shop owners on an Invercargill street are calling for authorities to make it safer. Centre Street is known for its high volume of crashes and near misses, with a four-year-old hit most recently. But the Invercargill City Council says it's a matter of personal responsibility. Since Kat Kemp opened her shop retro remix three months ago, she's seen at least one crash per month. That's in addition to a near miss almost every day she's been in store. Last night, a four-year-old boy was hit by a car while running out of the neighbouring discount store. His injuries were minor, but Kemp says the street is not safe. It's crazy. You get, like, hordes of people turning up, but, like, just because the street is so tiny, you have buses screaming around the corner, cars pulling out, and it just gets crazy. Like, three o'clock in the afternoon, it is just crazy. She says the main issues include a lack of visibility around the intersection of Hormona and Centre Street. There's also the narrowness of the street and the speeds people are driving at. Kemp says something needs to be done to prevent further accidents. They need to eliminate the parking on one side of the road and just keep the parking on this side and possibly put a speed bump in at the corner just to slow that traffic down as they're coming in. She and the neighbouring shop owners have been in contact with the City Council to try address this problem. The Council agrees that something needs to be done and is in the process of looking for solutions. Staff are also investigating ways to control litter in the area, which only has one rubbish bin. We've talked to the shop owners, um, we've also done some surveys and we continue to monitor what's, what needs to be done in terms of the the litter that um, we've increased the number of times to sweep the area so that we remove the litter from the curb and channel. Um, we're also looking at um, putting perhaps putting some extra litter bins in the park and around the area. Pearson says council's aware of the issues and concerns, but he says the responsibility doesn't entirely lie with council. People need to take more care when driving or using the area. A lot of it's up to the, the drivers to drive to the conditions. Um, you know, be, be aware that there will be pedestrians in those areas um, and take, um, I guess, consideration of the other road users. At the same time, please don't deposit litter, um, use litter bins, take it home. Um, we all like to look after our own communities. Both shop owners and council staff want to see a reduction in accidents and litter. In the meantime, they're urging people to take care. Ruby Spink, The South Today. A woman has serious injuries after being hit by a car in South Dunedin this morning. The pedestrian was struck by the car on a traffic light controlled crossing outside the Blind Foundation offices on Hillside Road. The incident happened at about 10.30am. Police are investigating the incident and have been speaking with witnesses. Two ambulances were dispatched to the scene and St John says the woman was taken to Dunedin Hospital's emergency department. The serious crash unit has been notified. The inaugural meeting of the newly elected Dunedin City Council has taken place this afternoon. There are six new councillors being sworn in to serve the city's ratepayers, joining a host of familiar faces. And the welcome included all the usual pomp and ceremony. The recently elected members of the Dunedin City Council were officially sworn to their duty today. It followed a pofiri and mihi whakatau from David Ellison. DCC Chief Executive Sue Bidrose then began the formal process of installing the Mayor and Councillors. The new faces are Conrad Stedman, Rachel Elder, Jim O'Malley, Damian Newell, Marie Laufiso and Christine Gary. Laufiso is the first woman of Samoan heritage to represent the city on council and says she's humbled to be elected. It means much gratitude to the people of Dunedin. Um, Given the population um, of Māori and Tung Pacifica people, um, it wasn't totally expected, or I didn't expect it, that um, a little city, a great little city like Dunedin, would um, actually elect 
um, a person of my background <laughs> and so I'm very grateful and I've been very um, humbled by the many people I've spoken to since the election day. Um, people I don't know who have just approached me and um, have said congratulations and they voted for for a green Dunedin ticket and uh, so happy that um, that we made it. Returning Deputy Mayor Chris Staines is an old hand around the local government table and offered some fatherly advice for new councillors. One thing for the new councillors to remember is that we are a governing body and so we have to stay away from operational issues and, and look at how the processes that are around council work and make sure that the right processes are there and then staff do the operational stuff and that's the hardest thing for anybody joining council to really understand. The re-elected councillors are Lee Vandivis, Doug Hall, Aaron Hawkins, David Benson-Pope, Andrew Wiley, Chris Staines, Kate Wilson and Mike Lord. Following the official process, elected members got straight down to business. They'll be in term for the next three years. Daryl Baser, The South Today. The cause of a devastating house fire in central Dunedin is under investigation. This Carroll Street home was destroyed by fire shortly before midday on Sunday. A pregnant woman reportedly had to jump from the second storey of the flat to safety. She was not seriously injured. The fire is thought to have started in the kitchen, but that hasn't been confirmed by authorities. About 100 onlookers gathered on the street to watch the incident, which was attended by five fire crews. A Dunedin artist has opened an installation showcasing the many and varied qualities of plastic. Housed at the Otago Pioneer Women's Memorial Hall, it charts the uses of the substance by early settlers up to the modern day. And for the artist, it's a continuation of a lifelong passion. A unique art installation has opened at the Otago Pioneer Women's Memorial Hall. It celebrates the history of plastic, beginning with its role in the lives of settlers. The artist is a lifelong plastic collector and is wanting to share its versatility. I've always been interested in historical pieces and so, you know, we've, um, we've just picked out um, individual items to show the changes in plastic and the changes of design and what they've been used for. The installation is made up of hundreds of plastic items, big and small, protected behind glass. Duwatt says this is a mere skim of the items she has, with a much larger collection kept in storage. She's lived in a number of countries during her career where she would trawl second-hand shops and even skips to find rare items. So it's actually very hard to get a lot of the items that I've got. Um, yes, I've just bought it, borrowed it <laughs> and scrounged it. The installation is set up like a museum exhibition, moving through the ages of plastic. It starts with natural plastics like horn and ivory and moves through casein, bakelite, all the way to modern synthetic plastics. For Duwatt, her collections are a continuation of a family tradition. I lived in a house where um, if you went away you, you had to come back with a salt and pepper shaker for, you know, to show your holiday where you've been. And after a while I quite liked the plastic ones and then I would add a cup and a saucer to it and it just grew topsy from there. The installation is on for two more weeks and Dewatt hopes many others get to see and enjoy the wonders of plastic as she has. Jack Conroy, The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, a former pub's upcoming transformation may suit at least one former regular and we meet the perfect woman. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin. Available as oil or in capsules, go to www.silverhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today.
The 2016 Dunedin Relay for Life will be held on the 19th and 20th of November at Forsyth Bar Stadium. The event will be full of fun, entertainment and team spirit. The Relay for Life is a 24 hour event where you and your team take part in walking a track to support local people affected by cancer. Hi there, my name is John Moyle and I am a cancer survivor. I had uh, cancer 10 years ago and I'll be all clear uh, in December this year, 10 years. So. It's a great accomplishment. The Cancer Society did amazing work in Otago. I've met some, uh, made some good friends and met some good people through that. Relay for Life is one of their major fundraisers for the year. And uh, I stress it's a really important building to hold behind it. It's great fun. And since I've moved into Forsyth Bar, the weather's not an issue. So get amongst it, raise some money, get your friends and family, workmates together, and get down and support the Relay for Life because the things that Cancer, Cancer Society do for the people in Otago in the way of services, providing support for families and, and people going through cancer treatment. But we want to see you down there at Forsyth Bar, raising lots of money, having lots of fun, November this year. Hi, I'm Nick. This is my third relay. We've had lots of fun fundraising for the Relay for Life this year. We've been doing cheese rolls with real onion. We've been selling raffles and have a quiz night coming up, which we're busy collecting prizes for that. We've had so much fun doing this in the past years. Can't wait to do it again. Hope to see you there. It's not too late to join in the fun. Register now. Relayforlife.org.nz Oh, help! Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. We need your help to rebuild our animal centre urgently. Please give a little today. Come one, come all to the Omaru Victorian Heritage Celebrations, a year to reflect on the intriguing world of medicine in the Victorian era. 16th to the 20th of November, www.vhc.co.nz for more information. Watch your seatbelts on for this one and rev it up. Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi-award winning Garador. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Welcome back. The Shield Hill pub in the Dunedin suburb of the same name has been a licensed establishment for more than half a century. It was closed in May last year when the owners decided to sell. The venue was then bought by an Auckland businessman whose plans for a boutique retirement village might suit at least one long-time regular. Where everybody knows his nickname. The bar at the Shield Hill pub is scheduled to be closed soon as the site is to morph into an upmarket retirement home. Des Rabbit Burrows began frequenting the Shell Hill Bar when he was underage and fondly remembers one of the reasons he got his nickname. And someone would know, you know, the police would be coming up so we'd get wind of it. So my brother and me, you could, we had a hole in the hedge, there was a gap in the hedge you could run through. You used to get through there and get up and we'd sit on top of the hedge. We were down there and the police were down there with torches looking for us. We were, you know, we were sitting on top of the hedge looking at them. As soon as we saw them going down the road, we just came down and came back into the bar again. He's just one patron among the establishment's rich history, albeit a long-serving one. However, the bar he and his pals are currently in is about to be refitted as part of a proposed set of boutique retirement units. In July this year, owner Avi Fadida received resource consent to build 25 luxury apartments on the site. Having gained council approval, he says the next stage of the project is finalising the building design and applying for it to be consented. Rabbit says although he's lived in the Waverley and Shell Hill area for most of his adult life and is at an age where a retirement apartment at his local would be a good prospect, he admits he's not too taken with the idea. I've been here long enough now, so... Oh, it's been good, yeah. Made a lot of friends. And 
a lot of mates. And, yeah. Fadida says he purchased this neighbouring property to aid the consent process, as the development plans include building on what is now the pub's car park. The initial plans say self-contained apartments will be built over two storeys and the bar will become a club room for residents. It's due to be finished by this time next year. Daryl Baser, The South Today. After two days of fierce competition, the perfect woman for 2016 has been found. 16 contestants attempted a range of quirky challenges for Wanaka's annual perfect woman competition at the weekend. But it was a 22-year-old Tokonui Shepherd who stood out from the flock. Pouring water into a jug from a digger was just one of the skills needed by 2016's perfect woman. 16 young women competed in a number of events including fencing, cooking a steak, wine tasting in front of a very enthusiastic crowd. The event was started in 2002 by Stu Burt. Great bunch of girls, I can't emphasise that enough and good local support again with events like the helicopters and the jet ski and the, the stuff that you know I can't provide that the local community puts together for me um, and you know we're raising a lot of money for a, a good cause, the Cancer Trust. 2016 winner was farm worker from Tokanui, 22 year old Rachel Rule. It was pretty unexpected, but it's been a really great weekend. Um, some amazing things from flying helicopter, knife throwing, clayboard shooting, some domestic skills like running around with a child on your hip, <laughs> having to set up washing. To Miller for the South Today. After the break on the South today, 160 years of education is celebrated with some famous faces. It will take a look at weather around the South for tomorrow. In every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Emu oil has been used for centuries to support joint mobility and tired muscles. Also helpful for supporting healthy skin. Available as oil or in capsules. Go to www.silverhorn.co.nz to order emu oil today. We need your help to rebuild our animal centre urgently. Please give a little today. Come one, come all to the Omaru Victorian Heritage Celebrations. A year to reflect on the intriguing world of medicine in the Victorian era. 16th to the 20th of November. www.vhc.co.nz for more information. Pregnant. Need to talk. 24 hours a day. 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. The 2016 Dunedin Relay for Life will be held on the 19th and 20th of November at Forsyth Bar Stadium. The event will be full of fun, entertainment and team spirit. The Relay for Life is a 24-hour event where you and your team take part in walking a track to support local people affected by cancer. Hi there, my name is John Moyle and I am a cancer survivor. I had uh, cancer 10 years ago and I'll be all clear uh, in December this year, 10 years, so it's a great accomplishment. The Cancer Society did amazing work in Otago and I've met some, uh, made some good friends and met some good people through that. Relay for Life is one of their major fundraisers for the year and uh, I stress it's a really important building to get behind it. It's great fun and since I've moved into Forsyth Bar the weather's not an issue. So get amongst it, raise some money, get your friends and family, workmates together and get down and support the Relay for Life because the things that Cancer, Cancer Society do for the people in Otago in the way of services, providing support for families and, and people going through cancer treatment. But we want to see you down there at Forsyth Bar, raising lots of money, having lots of fun, November this year. Hi, I'm Nick. This is my third relay. 
We've had lots of fun fundraising for the Relay for Life this year. We've been doing cheese rolls with real onion. We've been selling raffles and have a quiz night coming up, which we're busy collecting prizes for that. We've had so much fun doing this in the past years. Can't wait to do it again. Hope to see you there. It's not too late to join in the fun. Register now, relayforlife.org.nz. Watch your seatbelts on for this one and rev it up. Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi-award winning Garador. Here's something else to look forward to sinking your teeth into every weekend with the Otago Daily Times. The Weekend Mix. Your guide to what's hot in fashion, entertainment, food and more. New Weekend Magazine in your ODT. Pick up your copy this Saturday. Every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Welcome back. Police are investigating a fatal crash that occurred near Wallace Town in Southland yesterday. A 56-year-old man died at the scene at the intersection of Underwood Lynns Bridge Road and State Highway 99. It appears the victim, a motorcyclist, collided with a ute at about 3 p.m. The serious crash unit is investigating the incident. It was the third fatal crash on New Zealand roads during the long weekend. More than 200 people gathered in the Tokamarero district at the weekend for an educational celebration. It marked 160 years of education in the area as well as 50 year, the 50-year jubilee for two schools. And some well-known faces were among the special guests. TV presenter Samantha Hayes returned to her home district to celebrate 160 years of education in the Tokomairiro district. Hi, I'm Samuel White and I'm at Tokomairiro High School in Milton, which this weekend played host to a special reunion to celebrate the combined 160 years of education in Milton and the establishment of the local primary school and high school as two separate entities. The two-day event was organised by the local councillor Bruce Volweiler and included festivities such as a kapahaka performance by the local high school as well as special guests Samantha Hayes and Sir Richard Hayes. About 260 people registered for the event and travelled from as far as Australia. Many fond memories were shared by the well-known and former teacher Elizabeth Jack. He said, well, Elizabeth, you will stay for 25 years in one place and a lot of that for one school. That's the price you pay. <laughs> The commemorative cake was cut by another former teacher, Melva Bradshaw, and the newest and youngest pupil, Liv Schiller. Other events over the weekend included a formal dinner, barbecue, and special photographs taken to mark the occasion. Samuel White for the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Shop owners on an Invercargill street are calling on local authorities to make it safer following a host of crashes and near misses. Six new councillors have been sworn into office during the inaugural meeting of the newly elected Dunedin City Council. And a Dunedin artist is exposing the versatility of plastic through the decades with an installation at the Pioneer Women's Hall. It's time now for a look at what's going to be inside Wednesday's Otago Daily Times and we're joined by Phil Somerville. Good yes, evening. Hi Rebecca. The three fresh pages, and the front one's on fashion, about summer style, so what you can look for in the summer. <laughs> There's another story uh, about an eminent Christchurch neurosurgeon, following up from the big story that Eileen wrote about um, the professor from Dunedin talking about the lack of cooperation. He's just come out and said that uh, neurosurgery shouldn't be in Dunedin, it should all be centralised in Christchurch and surgeons leaving proves that, so that's uh, another story of note. Delta, uh, their woes, um, WorkSafe looking at Delta now and apparently the Commerce Commission also replacing all the power poles, that's obviously going to come at a hefty bill mm. and being a council owned ratepayers uh, that comes back in the end of course to us the ratepayers. We were also at the DCC meeting first today, and lovely pictures of the six new councillors, and a story about Lee Vandivis, um, 
attempting to put himself forward to be the chairman of the Infrastructure Services Committee, but uh, there was no other support for that move. Oh, details in tomorrow's Otago Daily Times. Thank you, Phil. Time now for tomorrow's weather. This weather update proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Manuka Honey. And here is today's southern view is taken of the monument at Signal Hill in Dunedin. To the situation, a low pressure system will move across the middle of the country tomorrow. The e-flow will tilt easterly and then southerly over Otago, bringing a cool, showery day. And that unfortunately is going to bring showers to Belclutha, the Catlins Gore and Lumsden tomorrow, all expecting a top temperature of 10 degrees. Rain is on the cards for Alexandra, Queenstown and Wanaka, highs of around 10 or 11 degrees. It's going to become fine though in Tiana with south easters and a high of 9. Rain with south easters for Omaru tomorrow and a high of 12 degrees. Uh, rain tomorrow for Omarama and Twizel, both on 10 degrees. Rain in Southerlies for Timaru with a high of 13. In Dunedin tonight, cloudy with some rain. It could be heavy at times as well. Tonight's low 8 degrees. Tomorrow it showers in the morning, but they will clear in the afternoon to sunny periods. Southerly winds will be ever present, 11 degrees the high. And on Thursday, sunny periods, although cloud will increase, westerlies will freshen, 16 degrees is the top temperature. In Invercargill tonight, showers clearing with an overnight low of 5. Tomorrow becoming fine with light south to southeast winds, 11 degrees is on the cards. And on Thursday, fine weather with cloud increasing, westerlies freshening, some showers developing at night and a high of 15. And that's all from the team here at the South today for Tuesday. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.